Welcome to the Ask Dad podcast by Soul Bliss Empire with Rachel and Jim. This is the podcast where science meets spirituality and our mission is to expand consciousness. You have arrived. Hello and welcome back to Ask Dad. I'm Rachel and this is Jim aka Dad. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about sort of our mission here and the clarity that we've gotten surrounding that. And so uh, tonight we're going to talk about demystifying the mysteries. And really, it it, um, it has to do with uh, sort of our, our freedom of consciousness. And my- mysteries are just mysteries because they've been kept secret from us. They've been uh, hidden and... Um, made into mysteries because because of that secrecy and because the people that have made them secret don't believe in our capability to handle those secrets um, as one thing and I believe it's also a measure of control because if you keep or if people are ignorant of these mysteries um, which is uh, really the only reason that they are mysteries is because we're ignorant of them is that um, then they can control us uh, through our ignorance because if we don't don't know something we don't know that we don't know it and and then we can be um it's just made much easier to control somebody uh, when they're ignorant of important knowledge in this world and so that is our our mission here um at soulless empire to demystify these mysteries so that we can reconnect back with our soul bliss um that through through knowing these these uh, amazing things and this amazing knowledge that that can truly help empower us and so uh we're going to start off by talking about levels of objective reality and i'll just uh go through the names that we've come up with and then i'll let jim kind of go into more depth with them uh but the first level is a physical objective reality which is uh, the things that we can touch and see things that we would say are in this world uh, that everybody agrees on. Uh, the second one is extra physical uh, objective reality. And then these are things that um, we can see through uh, the aid of technology. So like um, through microscopes, telescopes, x-rays, MRIs, et cetera. And that those are the sort of things that we can't see and we trust the machines that are telling us. So we call that extra physical objective reality. And then the third is ultra physical objective reality. And this is where it gets really interesting because this is sort of where most people would start to say it's getting woo-woo. But included in that reality is also our thoughts and our language, which we would all agree are there. And so it's interesting how the, the, in the ultra physical reality, objective reality, they kind of start to overlap the the woo-woo or spiritual or however you want to classify that um, and, and what we would call our reality. So that's where I'm going to end the introduction there. And Jim, I will let you go from there. I don't know if you wanted to start talking maybe more just about the physical objective reality or how you want to go from there, but the floor is yours. Oh yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll jump in a little bit on the, uh, the mystery part of it and then make a comment on the other. So um, lately I was watching people that were in a, uh, it was a mosque, happened to be a mosque. But it happens in all different kinds types uh, types of religious you know buildings, and where they're lighting candles and it's, you know there's nice nice big domes and you know artwork and carving and columns and the floor work is immaculate everything's just beautiful I mean they're beautiful places right and they're made they are made to to raise the energy and raise the vibration and for that reason they're I mean they're they're beautiful sacred spaces so I'm not detracting from the beauty of sacred spaces and and the what's there but when you see the people there they're you know they're they're doing these traditions and rituals and 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 the, a lot of them you know really don't make sense they're you know they're sort of you can sort of see that they're passed down on traditions that are just being done by rote you know just by repetition and then tradition and, and the whole outcome and the connection to God and all these things are, are just this mystery. And, and they're just, you know, sort of in vain, just groping and, and doing what, you know, what is the tradition 
dictates that they should do. And, you know, then, you know, and it does give them some measure of feeling of, of connection to God and those kinds of things. And, and, and that's in, a, in and of itself, that's fine. But what, what, what we're talking about here at Soul Bliss Empire is something that's more concrete, something that is more intentional, where we can connect with spiritual and metaphysical things, or in this term we're using ultra-physical, just to distinguish it from you know, metaphysical studies and the, all the things that are attached to that word. Meta just means above, ultra just means above physical, right? And so... And so the goal is to get past just the religiosity of religion, right? And really start to understand what is going on and what, what it is that we're connecting to. And, um, and so, yeah, so that takes away the woo-woo, right? That's, that's, the, that's kind of the goal, like or anti-woo-woo. You know, it's just like, let's know. Let's, uh, let's understand this. Let's, let's really get a hold of what's going on. Let's not be ignorant. Let's be educated as to what is going on. And so one of the things that, uh, as Rachel pointed out, is that we already uh, accept three levels. Like we, like woo-woo, anti-woo-woo is something that is agreed upon objective reality, right? A table, a door, another person, um, you know, the, the air we breathe, like all these things that are like concrete physical things that we can touch and see and feel and hear. You know, we, we call that objective reality. That's without a doubt, without disagreement, we can say that that is a part of our reality. And but now in, in our modern world, we, we believe we also know that there's ultraviolet radiation, right? There's there's infrared light. There's there's the, we see such a small spectrum, what we call the visible spectrum and we of light. And we know that, you know, all the way from you know, radio waves that are really long on one side to ultraviolet and gamma radiation that's on the other side, really, you know, really small, is that we, we know that, the, and, and, and really, that's all, they're all different forms of light in that sense, right? That they're just different, they're, it's perturbing the ether at a different frequency. And, and so that's, that's what we're calling extra physical, just to distinguish it from the physical, but we, we believe it, uh, you know, in our, in our culture, we believe it as absolute objective reality. Those things are there, right? You go out, you get a sunburn. Oh, that's from ultraviolet light, right? You go to a, a doctor and you get an x-ray. It's like, oh, yeah, no, these x-rays, they can see through and look at the bones and, and different or MRIs. You know, there's all these unseen things that we know are real. And so they are proper, a part of objective reality. And, and then we get to this ultra level that we've just termed ultra physical, just for sake of convenience and just dis and distinguishing it is you get into our thoughts, which now you can't measure thoughts and, 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 uh, but then you get into, and, and, and uh, like, uh, Rachel mentioned language. And then what about intentions, right? And intention is a certain kind of thought that has a, a directed focus that is linked to our will. So you go, oh, like free choice and willpower now is a part of this ultra physical aspect. And so why not have angels and remote viewing and other psychic phenomenon that that fits into that ultra physical quite easily? And, and on that note, there has been recently declassified CIA documents of a program that was headed up by a physicist, Dr. Russell Targ, and he's done a documentary on it. It's all been declassified. He couldn't talk about it for years, right? Under penalty of, you know, exposing classified information. Now it's been declassified and he felt that it was his duty to humanity to release the information. It's a wonderful documentary. I definitely recommend watching it. I can't think of the title right now, but if you Google uh, Russell Targ, T-A-R-G is his last name, documentary i'm sure it'll come up and it's it's worth watching because it goes into full detail of all of the the program that he was involved with and did the physical like the physicist scientific research on remote viewing and it's documented it's science it's it's not we can't call it woo woo right because he's got the hard data and it definitely falls into the same category as what we would call ultra physical 
and uh, with, with thoughts and intentions and willpower and angels and remote viewing and all of these other things that we have to now accept as a part of our objective reality, just as much as we accept ultraviolet radiation or x-rays. So that's, that's kind of the point of, of, of talking about these three levels of objective reality is basically saying, okay, we, we've, you know, like, a, you know, say 100 and, I don't know, pick, uh, say 150 years ago, we were pretty ignorant about the second level, right? The extra physical, you know, ultraviolet and x-rays and stuff like that was, you know, was, was kind of woo woo. Right. In that sense, you know, people had all sorts of crazy ideas of why things happened because they couldn't see the ultraviolet light or the, or the, you know, certain types of radiation and so on. So, but that became, now we're not ignorant of that, right. Our society became educated as to those things. And now in the same uh, spirit of education, that's what we're talking about is we're moving into an ultra physical objective reality that is available to learn about and to be educated on. And we don't, have, so, you know, that's what, you know, the anti-woo-woo, it's like, I, I, I don't like, I, you know, people use that. And I'm not going to like outlaw the term woo-woo, but to me, it's just, you're just saying that you were, you were, uh, you know, ignorant of, of these things and that's fine. We're all ignorant of something, right? It's just ignorant just means you're, you're uneducated. And so let's remove that veil of mystery and let's move into the area that is now occupied by religion and religious thought and religious theory and you know doctrine and all those things and let's pierce that and go what is really happening here and by doing that we can open up our consciousness we can we can have a true spirituality that's just not based on religious ideas and mysticism and let's get past the mysticism and get into something that we're actually informed adults in terms of what's ultra, what's ultrally physically real. Yeah. So we're definitely going to be talking about these types of subjects that, that are, would be considered uh, ultra physical, um, like you said, in order to demystify them and get the knowledge out there. But what would you say to people that are, you know, the type of people that need to see it to believe it and and won't sort of let go of that that need to see it to believe it because a lot of this stuff you can't see you I mean you can um some of it you can um uh, like the remote viewing and stuff is is able to be proved but um, not all of it is so what would you say to the people that don't don't want to believe in it yeah, I mean, that's a good point, right? I mean, it's there's always things that are sort of in the in our mind or, you know, we see the back of our mind or, you know, slowly moving forward out of the back of our mind, like somewhere in the process of believing something. Like we had that talk, I think, last recently we had a talk on belief. And that's kind of the question is, right? Well, how do you how do you actually create a solid belief in that, right? And um, so how did, so I guess I could pose that with another question is how did we come to believe in the extra physical, right? Level two of the objective reality. We, and the, and the answer is, is that we got machines that could measure it, right? We got spectrophotometers and, and um, uh, more advanced microscopes and uh, Geiger counters, right? To measure radiation and things like that. And so we go, oh, there it is. And then we could, and then you could do an experiment and go, okay, well, if we apply this and this radiation is happening, this should happen. And it does. Right. And so it's a repeatable experiment that shows that there's a cause and effect and the mystery is gone. Right. It becomes something that we can become comfortable with. And so I think, you know, the same thing is, is starting to happen with the ultra physical and I believe will continue to happen. With, with that. And there's, there's a lot of um, machinery. Uh, there's something called the BioWell, which is an advanced version of, of Kirillin photography. And if you're not, some if you're not familiar with Kir, uh, Kirillin photography, that was something that would actually, uh, was a type of photography that would, that could actually show like the aura, the light aura around living things. And now the BioWell, which is a little bit more advanced version of that, it's a, you know, a, taking that technology and advancing it, can actually show it becomes a, a medically 
proven device that shows the energetic body of human beings and where and it shows where there's if there's deficiencies that they can correlate that through their energy body down to their organs so if they see a you know if they see a certain brain like a instead of having like a nice let's say nice even aura if you've got this aura but all of a sudden here it's like you know it comes in and goes out and it's not you know there's a gap right this is a gap in your light body then they'll go oh a gap in the light body in that spot means like for example that your liver is in trouble right and then and then they can test your liver and they go oh yeah sure enough that's that's you know it, we see it here but it's manifesting here in the physical body so there becomes a correlation and there's a lot now of um i'm i, I see them on uh, television commercials where they're using the the heart wave technology right which is basically was used primarily kind of as a meditation teaching device where you put a clip right it monitors your heart rate and it measures heart rate variability and when your heart rate became like really like jagged that was when you know your there was there was anxiety or stress or you know some kind of fear and and then as you became relaxed then your heart rate gets a nice you know gets a nice non you know there's less variability and and becomes more like more systematic you could say more coherent is what is the term they use and as your heart rate becomes more coherent that is something is 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 showing you that you're actually going into a state of relaxation which is also helpful for meditation right but what the, i noticed what they're using on tv is that they're using it to reduce blood pressure right because as you relax your your blood vessels and capillaries expand right instead of you know, when you're stressed, they tighten up. And when you relax, they expand. And when they expand, your, your blood pressure goes down, right? So it's a cure for hypertension. So, so there's, you know, you're, they're seeing that these, these more ultra physical kinds of ideas are expanding the allopathic medicine, right? Which is just based on either a pill or a scalpel, right? Those are the two weapons they got. But now they're saying, oh, no, we can we can measure energetic responses and we can actually learn to to control some of our autonomic bodily responses with our mind. Right. Which the mind is part of the ultra physical now affecting the physical. Right. So there's so there's, there's a lot of, you know, if you're looking for it and you know what to look for, you can start to see that there are actual measurements tools that measure this kind of ultra physical reality objective reality just as you know we learned how to measure ultraviolet light for example right yeah that makes a lot of sense and i guess the other thing too is that there's always going to be probably that group of people that's more skeptic or sorry skeptic skeptical of that type of things if you look at technology there's always the early adopters and the late adopters and then the people in between right so it's like we're kind of at the early adoption stage right where you and i um are on board with it the, uh, adopting these beliefs or however you want to say that um and and then we help bring it to a more uh popular um place where more people know about it more people are willing to listen to it and you get kind of the, the different stages, right? So that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I wanted to mention too, uh, speaking of the advances, I guess you could say in, in this type of uh, ultra physical uh, reality is uh, when I was taking my Reiki training, my uh, Reiki master was saying that um, hospitals, not, not everywhere, but some hospitals uh, have Reiki practitioners there to help people after surgeries because they have seen people recover a lot faster with oh. uh, Reiki treatments after surgery. Right. Um, so I thought that that's promising as well. Having allopathic medicine, having the, um, the more naturopathic med medical people on board as well, or I guess maybe not technically medical staff, but um, including that in, in healing treatment. So yeah, what was called alternative uh, alternative is now, being oh we we need you alternative medicine yeah you're, you're you're actually helping so yeah you can join us here right yeah. yeah hey on the news just tonight actually um in bc there was a, a study at simon fraser university that's that said that being out in nature 
is good for your health. No way. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I guess for me, what's so, oh, go ahead, go finish. And I was just going to say, like, it, like, it's like, isn't that a little bit of an embarrassing admission to make? Like in 2022, allopathic medicine is saying, oh, and by the way, if you go out in nature, you know, it can improve your mental health and your physical health. No shit. Yeah. It's like <laughs> only this, the, the one thing we've been, we, I say we, but spiritual teachers have been telling people for oh. how many years? Millennium. How many yeah. millennium? Yeah. <laughs> people know that instinctively too, right? They instinctively. Yeah. Through my head or whatever, right? Like, it's, yeah. It's and they're like, oh, we did a study and you'll never guess if people go in nature, they feel better. Yeah. No way. Are you kidding me? You mean there's no pill? What? <laughs> you don't have to like cut in and like take something out and throw it away. No, no. You just go into nature. Look at the waves. Look at the trees. See a bird fly. You'll, you'll, you'll be great. You know, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I mean, good for them, right? They figured it yeah. out better late than never. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I guess what I was going to say is that I've never really been on like such a, a beginning end of things. And I wouldn't even say this is really beginning. I guess it's more the beginning of the masses to know this type of stuff. There's been many spiritual teachers for how, how many years, sure. right. That know this. Um, so it's kind of like the, the beginning of the masses knowing. So I've never really been on the other side of it. I've always sort of been on the, the receiving side of it and being like, oh, I don't know about this yet and waiting for other, the other early adopters to come on board. So it's a different um, perspective for me to, to be the one sharing this, this news. Um, yeah. So it's in interesting. It's, yeah, it's fascinating and I love diving into the the different things because it's to me it's so much more entertaining and amazing than uh you know normal physical objective reality um yeah it's time to expand uh, yeah. expand medicine expand ed education right because that's that's how like the second level became implanted in our culture through we learned it in school of course right somebody a responsible adult actually filled us in yeah. on what was happening in the scientific world you know and uh now this is what needs to happen in our education system is that these things need to be presented definitely right to kids at the appropriate age level in an appropriate context mm -hmm. but you know like what you don't want to tell the kids like what you know what's going on like it's 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 objectively proven right yeah. it's true yeah. and uh should be part of the education system should be part of the medical system yeah should be yeah, part of our legal our legal system yeah and even if you just started with meditation with the kids like that's that's a great place to start yeah and, and not too intrusive i think for for subject matter wise yeah yeah well we're gonna wrap that up for tonight uh mm -hmm. do you have anything you would like to add any last words of wisdom for our viewers uh well just yeah let's let's dive into and embrace you know the three levels of objective reality let's not uh, shy away from the mystery we talk about people you know still you hear people talk about the mystery schools you know and in egypt or atlantis and all these and no doubt there's still things that we need to learn and that are but let's let's you know take away the shroud of 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 secrecy that is associated with that kind of terminology and it has been it has been shrouded it has been called dark, right? Uh, dark religion, even our middle ages that were called the dark ages, you know, actually had a lot of this stuff in it, right? People knew this stuff intuitively and, and, and it, got, it got lost and it got, you know, squashed down by, at that time, the Roman Catholic Church, right? If, if you believe this stuff, yeah, there was a, there was a stake and some, some fire waiting for you, right? Yeah. You know, or the edge of a sword. Like a lot of people look in your history, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of entire like genocides, right? People that believe certain things and uh, no, that wouldn't, wasn't, wasn't going to work for the Catholic church. So they eliminated them. I'd so imagine. it's, yeah. So it's time, you know, it's time to move, move ahead on this. It is time. And I imagine that one of the reasons too, why it hasn't become so mainstream is because of, there's been a lot of fear for the people sharing it, right? Lifetimes of generational trauma. Yeah. I go back to the middle ages, 
bringing oh, that yeah. forward into this lifetime, right? Because you've been persecuted and killed for sharing this type of information before. So yeah, I imagine that has a lot to do with the, the slowness of this um, release of this information. But yeah, I agree. That's the feeling I get to that it's time. It's time to expand our minds and, and learn new information and, and take what you like and leave what you don't. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, you can find us online at uh, www.soullessempire.com or on Instagram at soullessempire. And we will see you next week. Thanks for watching.